In a world where energy fuels the engines of progress, few sectors hold the power to shape the course of nations and drive global economies quite like the petroleum industry. From the flicker of a light bulb to the roar of an airplane engine, the modern world thrives on the energy harnessed from the depths of the earth, fossil fuel. The petroleum industry often likened to the lifeblood of civilization is not merely an economic juggernaut, it's the heartbeat of modernity itself, often referred to as black gold. The access to oil reserves is almost like winning the lottery for any nation. Now imagine a nation blessed with this unexpected windfall of riches and natural resource bonanza that promises unprecedented wealth. One might envision a tale of unbridled prosperity, where fortunes rise, infrastructure flourishes, and citizens reap the benefits of newfound abundance. However, beneath this glittering surface often lurks an intricate economic phenomenon known as the Dutch disease, a paradoxical twist that can turn riches into riddles and blessings into bafflements. It's a multifaceted puzzle that has challenged the notions of economic growth, diversification, and sustainability. We have seen the dire effects of the Dutch disease in many countries, including neighboring Venezuela, once deemed the richest country in South America. In the 1950s, Venezuela was the fourth richest country per capita in the world, possessing one-fifth of the world's oil reserves. In a matter of two decades, it transitioned from affluent to impoverished. In 2015, Venezuela had over 100% inflation, the highest in the world, leading it to become the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. It is a lesson to remember, as the country focused solely on oil, which ultimately overshadowed all other industries, making the country over-dependent on oil. As the prices of oil fluctuated, so did Venezuela's economy, this was exacerbated by other political events. Guyana has taken key note of this and its government has made it public that it will learn from such harsh examples. Contrasting Venezuela's oil story is Norway. After discovering oil in the 1970s and the prudent management of the resource, Norway became the sixth richest country in the world and has since kept that title. Instead of rapid public spending to increase wages, strategic investments were made in health, education, diversification of other sectors, and creating a safety net for families hit by hard times. But the biggest player in Norway's successful economy was the move to establish a sovereign wealth fund to effectively manage the revenues from oil. Analyzing the vast difference Venezuela and Norway had in managing their oil resource, the government of Guyana created its own sovereign wealth fund, known as the Natural Resource Fund, which ensures the prudent management of the nation's oil earnings for the present and future benefit of the people. It ensures volatility in natural resource revenues does not lead to unstable public spending. Withdrawals from the National Resource Fund, NRF, are clearly aligned with the government's development priorities as identified in the national budget. Some of these interventions include increasing the quality and capacity of the education system, including the promise to have free tertiary education, overhauling the healthcare system to become a net exporter of healthcare services to the region, constructing roads and highways to connect not only regions, but to establish better links to its neighboring countries. Investing in a new deep water port to boost the cargo capacity. Investing in cleaner energy including hydro, solar and wind and a 300 megawatt natural gas power plant. All of these will reduce transportation costs, reduce transit times and increase economic competitiveness. The NRF expedites these processes while imposing stringent regulations on savings and expenditures. Its establishment aims to prevent flooding the economy with an excessive influx of money too rapidly, thus mitigating the risk of hyperinflation in exchange rates. This strategy facilitates smoother economic growth and diversification. This also guards against the fluctuations of oil prices while saving and investing money for future generations. According to a report published by Spherex Analytics, the governance structure of the Natural Resource Fund Act 
satisfies the requirements of the Santiago Principles, which is a voluntary set of 24 guidelines designed to promote good governance, accountability, transparency, and prudent investment practices, as well as maintain a stable and open investment climate. The initial NRF set up by a previous government saw the Minister of Finance being the sole manager of the fund. This was changed in 2021 to allow for greater transparency. Now, the ultimate oversight body of the fund is the National Assembly, the Public Accounts Committee, the Bank of Guyana, the Board of Directors, the Public Accountability and Oversight Committee, which by design will exercise non-governmental oversight, and the Ministry of Finance. National development priorities of the country are clearly outlined by the government in its manifesto, the LCDS, budget presentations, policy positions, and demonstrated through the types of policies being pursued within the broad framework of its developmental agenda. The withdrawals from the NRF can be clearly aligned with these priority areas identified in the national budget. Guyana began pumping oil in late 2019 and by 2027 is projected to produce a million barrels per day, making it the largest producer of oil in the world on a per capita basis. Currently, Guyana has an average of US $1 billion in the NRF and by 2027, that amount is expected to multiply tenfold.